So the purpose of this video is to introduce the concepts of consolidation settlement, how to do those calculations. I want to start off by looking at the stresses on a bar. Uh, so this bar um, has an initial length L0. We apply a stress and it stretches and it changes in length by DL. Now let's look at the stress strain relationship for this bar. Um, we're going to assume that this material it has a linear elastic relationship between stress and strain. So the slope of our curve between stress and strain is the modulus elasticity or E. So we can see that we have a relationship that stress is equal to the modulus elasticity times our strain or that our strain is the stress divided by our modulus, modulus elasticity. We also know that our strain is equal to the change in length over the original or initial length. And therefore the change in length is equal to the initial length times the strain, or the initial length times the ratio of stress over the modulus elasticity. Now we want to look at a case a little more complex. The bar that we are uh, applying a stress to uh, has some nonlinear behavior, and so it's linear up to a certain point, and then it yields, and so there's a change in the in the stiffness of the material. This first point is the locates the yield stress and a strain where the material yields and the slope is has a modulus value. And then we'll also indicate that the sec the slope of the stress strain curve beyond yield also has a modulus value E2. Now we're going to apply a stress sigma A, and we would like to be able to find what the strain is, the strain at A. So given the following information, given the uh, yield stress, the modulus of elasticity, um, E1 and E2 for the slopes of the two uh, curves, and then sigma A, I would like to find the change in length of the rod. So basically, I just need to find out what the strain, strain A is. Um, I know that the change in length of the rod is L0 times the strain, and the strain to point A is going to be sigma, the yield stress over E1 plus the difference in stress between the yield stress and point A over E2. That's the strain to point A, and so then the change in length would be the original length times that strain. Calculating the consolidation settlement for normally consolidated soils is similar to our linear elastic material. So for our normally consolidated soil, instead of stress versus strain, we're going to plot a void ratio on the vertical axis and effective stress on the horizontal axis in log scale. When we look at the, this relationship for normally consolidated soil, it's going to be a linear relationship. Uh, we'll consider the first point on our curve is the, our pre-consolidation stress, and it's also our initial vertical effective stress. The slope of the curve is equal to our compression index C sub C. And then we're going to add some stress to the soil. So we're going to have sigma prime Z naught plus delta sigma. And so given our pre-consolidation stress, sigma prime Z naught plus delta sigma, and our compression index C sub C, I want to be able to find out what the change in the thickness of our soil layer is. So similar to the um, finding out the change in length of a rod, we just need to find out what our strain is and then multiply the strain by the original thickness of the clay layer. That will give us our settlement. So we want to find our strain in the soil layer. We know that the volumetric strain is equal to the change in the void ratio over 1 plus the initial void ratio. So therefore the settlement is going to be equal to the thickness of the layer times our strain. Now given the information that we have, the change in void ratio is our compression index C sub C times the final stress, the log of sigma prime Z naught plus delta sigma minus the log of the initial vertical effective stress, sigma prime Z naught. So we can say that our strain is C sub C over 1 plus E naught times the log of our final stress over our initial stress. In our settlement, we'll just multiply that strain by the thickness H, and that gives us the settlement. Um, in that step where I go from delta E, uh, when looking at the difference of those log stresses, I've used the law of logs to convert that difference into a division problem. 
Now we want to look at overconsolidated soils. And there are two situations we can have for overconsolidated soils. So we're going to start off by looking at, at case one. So overconsolidated soils are like our uh, bar with a bilinear stress strain curve. So overconsolidated soils, again, we're plotting our void ratio versus effective stress on a log scale. So we're going to have our settlement curve is going to be uh, bilinear. Um, so from our initial vertical effective stress to the pre-consolidation stress sigma prime c, the curve will have a slope of c sub r. Um, and for this case, when we add some stress to this soil, um, our initial vertical effective stress plus the increase in stress is less than our pre-consolidation stress. And so in order to calculate settlement, all we need to use is the slope of the curve for that first for that first curve. So we're going to use C sub r to determine our change in void ratio and the strain um, that occurs in the soil for this overconsolidated soil. And again, that's because sigma prime z naught plus delta sigma is less than our pre-consolidation stress. So we only need to use the slope of the first portion of the settlement curve. So again, calculate our strain as the change in void ratio over 1 plus the initial void ratio. And our change in void ratio then is the slope of that curve times the log of our final stress, which is sigma prime z naught plus delta sigma minus the log of the initial vertical effective stress. That's the change in void ratio. So the strain then is C sub r over 1 plus e naught times the log of our final stress divided by the, our initial vertical effective stress. Again, in, in order to find the settlement, I'll just multiply the strain by the thickness of the clay layer. I don't show that equation here, but that's all we have to do is take the strain, multiply it by the clay layer thickness to find our settlement. Now for case two, again, we're going to plot up this bilinear void ratio versus effective stress curve with, again, the effective stress being on a log scale. So we have our void ratio, vertical axis, effective stress on the horizontal scale, and then our bilinear relationship. Again, the slope of the first section of the curve is C sub R, our recompression index. The second slope of the section portion is C sub C, is our compression index. The first point to the left is our initial vertical effective stress. We also see the pre-consolidation stress. Um, and now, when we add delta sigma to our soil profile, the initial vertical effective stress plus delta sigma is going to be greater than our pre-consolidation stress, sigma prime C. So we're going to get settlement along the recompression curve, and then we're going to get compression along the virgin compression curve. So we're going to need to use the slope, both slopes, C sub r and C sub c, just like when we did a calculated the change in length of the bar, where we used both slopes of our stress strain curve. We're going to use both slopes of our settlement curve to calculate the settlement of our soil. As always, we start off by recognizing that the strain is the change in void ratio over 1 plus the initial void ratio. So what's the change in void ratio when we apply this delta sigma to our soil profile? Well, it's equal to C sub r, the slope of the first portion of the curve, times the log of our pre-consolidation stress minus initial vertical effective stress, plus C sub c, our compression index, times the log of our final stress, which is sigma prime z naught plus delta sigma, minus the log of our pre-consolidation stress. So and then we're just simplifying that change in void ratio, so we're looking at the ratio of the stresses instead of the differences using the law of logs. And then we'll take that initial void ratio, and here we actually write out the equation for settlement, so I have my change in void ratio times the initial thickness of the soil profile, which is h. So I multiply h by the delta, the change in void ratio, and divide by 1 plus e naught, and that gives me my settlement for this overconsolidated soil case 2 where my initial vertical effective stress plus delta sigma is greater than sigma prime c naught